Hey everybody, welcome to Debug This Podcast, where we talk about software engineering in a corporate setting. Right now we're doing this really, really cool mini series called How to Build a Championship Software Engineering Team. Um, we're on our third video right now, so if you missed any of our prior videos, please go back and check them out. It's kind of like movie sequels, right? You can't miss, you can't watch the third one without watching the first one. You don't know what's happening, you don't know the characters, and you don't want to be that person who's asking. <laughs> you don't want to be the person asking, like, who's who's that? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. So go back, watch those, come back. It's really, really, really great stuff. Um, I think our first one was just the intro, right? Uh, the second one was uh, uh, how to define winning. And now we're here today. We're going to talk about some offensive and defensive strategy. Funny story about, about this topic, offensive and defensive strategy is, I think at first we were trying to Okay, well, excuse me. I was trying to silo it um, in a box, in an offensive box and a defensive box. And, you know, we put a T-chart uh, on the board and, and we just started brainstorming. And um, we started realizing that it, it's really hard to put it in those boxes, right, Eddie? Yeah, because a, a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about today um, overlap in, between both uh, offense and defense. Uh, de defensive categories, so things like um, planning for future um, tech debt, right? That would be considered, I think, um, a defensive strategy because you're trying to shield yourself from having to do extra work. But actually, you know, getting that, it, you're doing the work itself is attacking the problem, and so um, that would be an offensive uh, bucket. So you know, instead of having to try to silo a bunch of different things into uh, two different categories that could overlap. We decided that we should just combine them, talk about the uh, the overall uh, view of these topics, and then you know the way that you guys need to implement them on your own team or your own project, and then you'll be able to fit them where where it suits you. Yep, yep. It's really it was so abstract; it was a little difficult to pin it down. Yep. But um, we did come up with three uh, sections that we we thought were really really important. Uh, to talk to talk on and obviously there's more so this is not a like exhaustive list at all mm -hmm. and the three buckets the three topics are uh, game clock awareness which is really time management yeah and you know and time is everyone's constraint you know um the only reason why we have all these problems is because of time you know what i mean i mean if, if the business that you're working for or you know your product manager was like hey build me feature a and feature feature B and uh, there's no time limit, right? We wouldn't be in this predicament. Right. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. One person doing everything and who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it done in five years. It's fine. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, it's, um, we're, we're having to do this in a very specific time. And so, you know, you have to be efficient with that time and to be efficient, you have to understand it and know it. So that's, um, that's knowing the game clock, being aware. And, you know, we have a really cool example, which was uh, the Cavs versus, um, uh, who who was it? Uh, 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 Golden State Warriors. Cavs versus oh, yeah. Golden State Warriors, where J.R. Smith just totally flubbed uh, uh, the last, like, oh, what was it? Like, like 10 seconds or something like that, or five seconds? Yeah. I mean, he he caught the rebound, and he just he just did not know the game plan, or or he didn't have any game clock awareness, right? He thought the team was going to call a timeout, and it, and, and it messed it all up. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end for them, because they got swept. But... The game clock awareness, you know, knowing where you are, knowing where the sprint is, knowing big deadlines. And we're going to come back to that and touch that, touch on that. Uh, number two is resources. And the last one is fundamentals. And uh, the thing about fundamentals um, is we, we, we believe it's really applicable for all teams. And these are what every, how should I put this, every software engineering team will be doing. Yeah. I think that's a very safe word to say because you are definitely going to be doing these things and then you have to be uh, aware of it and making sure you're doing those. So let's go back. Uh, number one, game clock, game time awareness, mm -hmm. game clock, knowing where you are, um, setting the schedule. Yep. What's that all about, Eddie? What's, what's going on there? So this could be a very broad thing that you're thinking of right now, but what we're talking about is keeping everybody on the same page in terms of when people come in. Obviously, like, we're not, we're not talking to we're not talking about um, micromanaging people. We're talking about yeah. getting everybody on the same page. So if if the time to start the day is nine o'clock, then we should all be available at nine o'clock too. 
to converse, if, if that's when your sprints are, a lot of times uh, a Kiwi and I will will come in in the morning. I'm the sprints, uh, your stand-ups. Uh, Kiwi, Kiwi and I will come in, in the morning. We'll kind of talk about uh, you know what we're going to be doing for the day, getting prepared. We do our stand-up right away, and then boom, we're off to the races. And so, but that's yeah. every single day at the same exact time. And you know, it's easy for most agile teams because their sprints are generally in the morning. And um, mm-hmm. that's an indicator of, of the first time that you're gonna actually be starting work is right after your standup. So, but if you don't have that, um, this this is definitely for you guys, uh, especially because you're gonna have questions. You're gonna have to be able to collaborate with other team members. Yeah. And if you guys are yep. not synced with those times, then it's gonna be very very difficult for you. Yeah, I mean, you can miss one day and be out the loop, you know, and, and major decisions, right? And you come in, you're still working on your ticket and, and you know, there was just a big decision that was just made, mm-hmm. right? Now, now you just wasted half your day or something. So, right. Um, we used a really good example. Uh, that's, you know, the, having, being on the same rhythm, coming at the same time, is sort of like, you know, on game day when Tom Brady comes in, right? Ready to play the game. No one's coming late to that game. You yeah. know? Can you imagine like Tom Brady coming in late? <laughs> he's, he's like it's running crazy. in. Like, I'm sorry, the I ninety was kind of kind of busy. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna do a I Liberty slept through 42. my I slept through my alarm a couple <laughs> times. There's no way that's happening. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, if you put it in that perspective, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like no no player is gonna be late to game day. So I mean, I think we're talking about way. championship teams. We're not talking about. Just yeah. coming into work and doing Jira tickets all day, because if that's yeah, if that's yeah. what you want to do, you're probably not watching this video. You know, you want to be on a championship Ooh. team. You want to. You're gonna be hurting some feelings. You're gonna be I'm, hurting some feelings. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> this is tough love right now, right? If uh, if you're if you're watching this video, that means that you probably want to either be in the championship team or build a yep. championship team. So that's that's so these are the these are the uh, fundamentals that we're talking to you guys about, and so you know. Having this in here and not just going in and doing Jira tickets all day and then just going home and clocking out, um, you know, yeah. being able to be on the same page with your team is super important and making sure that, you know, you guys know the schedule and know the game clock, not be late because, like Kiva said, is Tom Brady's late to a game? No, he's not because he's a champion, <laughs> right? No, it's just that, and that sounds ridiculous. Like, it doesn't even, it just it won't even happen. Yeah. Um, uh, knowing big dates. I think mm-hmm. this is really important, you know, um, knowing when releases are knowing uh your sprint schedule you know only because that gives you an idea of where you are with your tickets and and what the the last day of the sprint is right because um if you know you're gonna if you have more ticket than you do have time you know the next stand-up you can actually ask for help or um you can like you know let your senior lead or your lead know that that way you know, we can move people around or, you know, start strategizing of what we can drop or what we can't, that sort of thing, right? Right. And that goes and, back to communication um, as well, right? So you need to make yeah. sure you're communi- communicating with your team. But the first part of communication is is understanding and awareness of what's going on around you. And so yeah. um, it's important, you know, just because you're not a team lead, just because you may not be a team leader, you may not be a, a senior developer, doesn't mean that it's not equally important for for you to understand where things are within the project and within the scope of what everybody's working on just an, just as a basic awareness and understanding of it because um that's only going to help yep. you in in the future if you if you need something big if you need help on something big and you know okay the x person on my team you know just wrapped up a ticket so they have time now that's yep. th- that's yep. going to be beneficial to you if you don't know where everybody's at then you're not going to have a, an understanding of who can you ask for help who's going to be able to, to stop what they're doing um just this is all about like getting rid of blockers, finishing the project, making sure everybody's helping each other out. But but definitely, um, you know, having that awareness of that time is is incredibly important. Yeah, and you start getting into a rhythm, and and you'll start realizing your own rhythm. You know, so if you know uh, normally when there's three days left, I, I have a little extra time. You know, you start getting, you start knowing your own rhythm when you under, when you know how many days left. Are in the sprint or how many days left that are not in the sprint you know you're like oh no i have two more days here we go you know i need to i need to wrap it up um knowing the playbook i think this is really good and i, I know it's a really um a very abstract kind of kind of concept but uh, i think what we're touching on here is just knowing all your processes right knowing what to do when you're done with code 
and sending it into the PR request, right? Mm-hmm. That should be standardized and, and the same for everybody because if it's not, um, a lot of miscommunication could happen and a lot of wasted time, right? Because you're you, you got to look over and you got to ask somebody. Yep. Somebody has to come over and help you. Um, if you get it wrong, you got to go in the back and edit it, edit it. And uh, I, that word always trips me up, edit it. Um, but knowing the play the playbook is also, I think, a, a huge part of that is um, updating documentation and doing documentation together, mm-hmm. which we which we do a lot. Yeah, you know, a lot of times people will say, "Hey, it's a big waste of time to do documentation. We can just talk about it, and then the, once the process yeah. is set, then we'll remember, we'll get muscle memory, and then we'll be good to go." <clears throat> the reason why it's good to uh, to to write it down, to talk about it, to to document the process is because a you're not gonna know if that's a, if, if the process is gonna be effective or not right away. You're just yeah. not. You yeah. have to actually go through it a bunch of times. <clears throat> Going through it once or twice is not gonna give you enough information to be able to say, is this the most effective way to do this process? I mean, I can't tell you how many times Kiwi and I and Thomas will get together and then re- revisit and, and refactor a, a process that we're doing. We do it <laughs> yeah. constantly because, you know, sometimes yeah. it'll be like, well, you know what, this doesn't work as well as we thought it was going to, yeah. so let's, let's change it or let's scrap it completely because it doesn't even, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't help the, it doesn't give, it give us any value. So let me give you an example of, of that changing up the process. We, uh, when, when we do our pull request, we had an extra process in there to create additional subtasks in our, in our JIRA story for uh, people yeah. who, to do the actual code reviews and to assign themselves the code reviews um, in those subtasks so that we can, we can uh, lock time against it and then we can kind of play the, play, the blame game, right? Um, the problem is that <laughs> people are so busy in the office that we, can, we constantly, including myself, forget to assign ourselves to the stories, to the subtasks, and then close the ticket. We're just going into, yeah. going into the pull requests and then doing our code reviews. So we felt, is this really a value added? Does this really affect the outcome of the pull request or, or the, the, the task that we're trying to complete? And we decided- Yeah, and it, it didn't. didn't. It didn't at all. So we yeah. said, okay, let's scrap it. You know, we can log time against the original story, that, so that solves the problem right there. And you know, we're just creating an additional tech debt for ourselves because we're having to do additional. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. if, but if we didn't write that down, if we were just kind of winging it, and we never would have known, or we may not have known as quickly um, that, that that portion of the process didn't work and should have been revisited. So exactly. that's a good example of, of what we're talking about. Yeah, um, I mean, that example right there is what sparked it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what sparked um, doing, knowing the playbook because then we went in. I, I don't think we did it right away. I think we did it maybe that Friday. We went in and actually updated the playbook. We yeah. said, okay, we're taking this step out. That step is gone, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, and doing it together and, and revisiting it uh, often is where, the, is where the key's at because if you do it every <laughs> once in a while, it, again, it becomes kind of uh, tedious and it becomes kind of bo- um, lame. And it just becomes one of those things where, you know, it gets out of sync really fast. Yeah. Right. You look at it and you're like, we don't even use that anymore. Like, what is it? What? <laughs> Who uses yeah. this anymore? It's like, what the heck? Plus right, for so onboarding, let me just go to just one more example oh, yeah, of right. why, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, knowing the playbook and having a playbook is important. So onboarding. So when you're, when you're, when you're bringing somebody new on the team, I think anybody can attest that it's very difficult to get people up to speed it it generally takes between three weeks and two months to get somebody really acclimated to just the process of how things work in the office yeah um yeah having a playbook makes it really easy for um i mean let's keep it real the seniors and the leads on the team um to have to constantly go back and re-explain processes to new people um it's not that they don't want to do that it's that it's you know they're busy. Obviously, everybody's busy, and it's really easy to to point to a step by step guide on how to you know create the launch stories or how to do your pull yeah. requests um, descriptions. Set up probably. your environment. Yeah, set up your environment. Like obviously, yeah. everybody knows the the um, the effectiveness of README files for when you're setting up your your environments, and so the, we're trying to incorporate that into the process so there's less time of trying to rehash and rehash the process and saying like, hey, if you don't understand something in that document, then we'll talk about it. But you know, that should be a yeah. really easy step-by-step guide to, to handle whatever you're trying to do. So that gets us right into the next 
topic, which is effective planning and blackout dates, which mm-hmm. I think go go hand in hand pretty well. Yes. Um, you know, these are things just like I don't know, um, uh, not not setting launch dates on like near vacations and holidays, that yeah. sort of thing, right? Um, knowing everyone's PTO times and just you know sort of planning accordingly. And, you know, that's that's all in the name of just, you know, fighting this thing that we're all fighting, which is just time constraints. So uh, you have any words on uh, effective planning? Because I know you had more more to talk about in that in that category. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, effective planning is is not just um, is not just talking about the projects you guys want to work on, you know, making sure that you that you have a set planning date and then you actually follow through with that planning meeting. To make sure everybody's on the same page for stories. I, if if you don't have it, if you don't have an agile environment that you're working within, um, that's okay. You guys could still set up uh, meetings that you talk that you can talk about every couple of weeks, just to kind of yep. revisit the things that you've been working on, and then to effectively plan for the next few weeks. It doesn't have to be you know officially agile. It could just be hey, we're all collectively talking about the project at hand and what we're going to be working on, so that we have an idea <clears throat> of where everybody's at. Not not just showing up, but showing up and not being on your laptop working while you're doing the meeting. I see, you know, so <laughs> many developers will show up to these meetings with their laptop and they'll just yeah. continue to work instead of actually yeah. engaging in the planning meeting. And it's so yeah. super important to do that. Um, blackout dates, I think Kivi had touched that on a little bit. Try not to, to uh, plan, you know, project launches around holidays. Um, it's really difficult um, to keep people around when, when those holidays uh, come. And uh, and you know you're doing a big launch. You're gonna have big bugs. And uh, oh yeah, happens every time. I like time. that one. And, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you want to make sure Write that people that are down. around to uh, to you know either mitigate the the issues of bugs or just or fix them and and, and get a, a recommits up there. Um, you want to have the, that resources available to you. And around holidays, it's kind of hard to do that, um, as, as well as as uh, people's uh, PTO and and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if this is more like a senior lead thing, or maybe this is actually a team fight thing. But but fighting for resources and knowing when to fight for it is that like uh, uh, knowing when to call for Rex or knowing when to to uh, to I guess ask for more bodies. Is that what? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. So that's more of a senior a senior or a, or a lead um, issue. But you know we have those people out there that are watching the show, so we definitely want to touch on that as well. I mean, I have a, a yeah. good experience talking about that since I'm the, the senior lead. Um, but, you know, knowing when it is appropriate to ask for more resources, more bodies in, in the building, um, you know. It's like the draft pick, right? You're like, like hey, I need, I need a couple of draft picks. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's and not, not just knowing, not just being able to add, be an advocate for more, recess, for, for more resources for your team because eventually, you know they're gonna get burned out. You don't want your team to get burned out. You don't want to get burned out because then you know production it, it takes a hit for it. So yep. understanding is it a short term or a long term um, uh, speed bump that you're trying to to get around? Um, if it's a long term one, then yeah, definitely advocate for it. If it's a short term, okay. can you have quick substitutions? Maybe one of your other you know more experienced devs can can push to the sides uh, a ticket that they're working on to try to get you over that hurdle uh, and, and forward if it's something that's small and we can do that, maybe a yeah. sprint. Maybe one or two sprints gets um, gets affected by that, but not too much. Um, and the reason why I would say like, don't just say I would need more people immediately is because you're, the company you're working for is only gonna give you so much. And so yeah. if, you, if you are asking for resources when you don't necessarily need those resources, then the next time you ask, they're gonna eat, they're gonna definitely doubt you. Uh, they may not give yep. it to you at all because then because you already wasted a bunch of money and time for people that you didn't really need. Yeah. And so is it kind of like boy cry wolf kind of thing? Is it like a boy boy cry wolf? Yeah, like kind of. It, they're gonna just okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and then they'll just say, look, you know, we already gave you bodies and you didn't do anything with them. Yeah. So like, why should we? And your career is gonna get hindered at that company because of it because they're like. Well, this person isn't isn't a good manager because they don't understand when they need resources. So just oh wow yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't so think about that. Just definitely be an advocate for for resources for your team. I know I pressure my executive leadership team constantly for resources, um, but 
knowing when to take a step back and saying, should we just work a little bit harder this sprint? Should we just sacrifice yeah. a little bit extra of our personal time to get this done? And then if we do that, I'll have more leeway later on to say, okay, now I need two or three more people. No matter what, everything goes back to the game clock. And that's why it was our number one uh, topic. Yes. And, the, and the, length, the most lengthy topic in the uh, video. Because yep. everything you do is going to affect the time that it takes to do it. So resources is definitely one of those things. Knowing who the people on your team, knowing their strengths and weaknesses are, is definitely going to be affecting the game clock. Um, you know, we have a game clock yeah. on our whiteboard behind us. Just so <laughs> look at it and go, this is what we got. You know, this is where we're at. And we, we talk. And it could be easy. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just a whiteboard and we put game clock and we put, you know, this, this, uh, where we're at in the sprint and how in the dates and stuff. It's real easy, real simple, Sim uh, simple but effective. Yeah. And it definitely helps us with, with our time management, making sure that we're aware, like, okay, we got seven days left in the sprint and we have to actually kick it into gear or something. Or, or are we good? Are we just like, we're on track yeah. for what we're doing and we don't have to worry about it too much? I mean, depending on what that is. And, and n not that we don't have to worry at all because there are other people on the team, right? Like, I'm a big advocate yeah. for it doesn't matter if you're done with your project. It, you don't have to just immediately pull something else up. You can help your team to make sure that they're done with their project because yeah. then the most important thing is to not drop stories. Um, yeah, plan yeah, plan. yeah. And I think um, we didn't really make it into a, a topic, but it's because um, not everyone uses the same product, but it, it's almost like it, it's almost like gaming Jira, if that makes sense, or, or gaming the, the reporting. And what I mean is just, you know, you might not necessarily need to always like all the resources, but maybe you and your team can pull together to, you know, knock out certain tickets to make sure, you know, uh, what's the, the burn rate looks good. Or, um, you know, like, like these tickets are not getting dropped. Like on the surface, it looks like the one developer is doing it, but it's actually three developers attacking that one right. problem. So it's kind of like, so, so you're kind of getting together and making sure those Jira reports look really good because we're gaming, we're gaming the Jira, the, the Jira game essentially. Yeah. So, and when that reporting looks good, you know the higher ups look at looks at look at those reports and they're like whoa there's mm -hmm. some amazing things going on with this team so um maybe that should have been a section i don't know all right uh so last but not least fundamentals uh i think it's very safe to say that all software engineering teams will get something out of this this is very very applicable to, to everyone it's very you know high level and very general um the first one is keeping up with tech keeping up with the current trends and this is this is hard because you know we're everyone's busy. Everyone has a life to live. Everyone's working full time, and at the same time, you have to make um, you have to make time out your busy day to to learn essentially and learn what's coming out there. And this is important for not only you and your career, but um, the project itself. You know, you definitely want to make sure that that in your code base, you're practicing the current trends. You're you're using the most uh, safe and secure packages. Um, with keeping up with tech. How, like how how would how do you balance something like this, Eddie? Like how do you balance working and keeping up with tech and just you know keeping sane? Uh, keeping sane is probably what I try to do, but um, <laughs> you know I I kind of took a, a a play out of your playbook, Kivia. Um, you know I wasn't the best at doing this uh, before you and I started working together. And you know Kivia's schedule. Um, I know you guys don't know because we haven't told you, but. Um, he, he works six days a week, right? So he'll take Saturday completely off. Don't do anything. Don't think about work um, if yeah, you absolutely yeah. don't have to. Um, and then on Sunday, which is when we do these videos, um, we he um, uh, you know he does his work. He you know, goes into the office and does a little bit of work during the day, just kind of preps for the week. Um, learns anything that, that he needs to learn for what's coming up. You know, I think that that's a, a really good strategy. Um, I've been definitely incorporating it, and I've and I found that um, it's helped me a lot. You know, I have you know three kids and a huge household, and and everybody's all nuts all the time. And it's it is really hard to keep <laughs> up on tech because it is part of your personal time to do it, right? You have to yeah, go yeah. home and then at home make do more work. You know, so it's really easy to fall yeah. in the trap where you're exhausted, your brain's tired, you just want to zone out and decompress, but you know that you know, the new version of React's coming out, so you gotta make sure that, you know, there's n nothing's gonna break your entire application if if, yep. uh, if you yep. change, you know, if you upgrade to the new version. Um, you know, going to coding meetups and, and meeting with other coders, which is a very important wow. thing to do. 
um, especially if you're a team lead because you're going to want to have that um, that pool of resources you could just grab and say like oh i met this person who at a, at a coding conference or a meetup in town that does exactly what we're looking for in this new rec that we just opened so let's yank, yeah, try to yank yeah. them in you know so that's really important that's and doing that in your personal time is really hard i think taking specific time out of the week to dedicate just for your education is probably a really good starter you know saying okay on sundays or on saturdays or whatever day you guys want um for, yeah where's that for you for three or four hours i'm just going to focus on um you know trying to improve at x library or yeah. at this piece of code or this code base or this concept or something like that exactly so just take that time sliver it out you know you know you could take three or four hours out of the w whole week to try to improve yourself it's just going to help your career it's going to help your project it's going to save you time later yeah. on for sure oh it's um it's just like you know kobe or or uh, cristiano ronaldo when they go in and they practice the same kicks the same shot you know it's just like that it's staying up with the current trends you know they're practicing new moves i mean it's, it's the same way you're going in and um you're practicing what you do every single day which is what we do is which, which is code right yep. so you know you're, you're going in there and you're you know you're going in there and you're doing that 100 100 shots or a thousand i think it was kobe will go in there and just do a thousand shots before a game and after yeah. a game so you know it's the same thing you know you have to go in and um I think about it as a as a training you know you're a professional athlete and you're training your skill which is code i think this is kind of a defensive move and i could be wrong but coding out of bad habits I you know agree. in um and you know in your pull request there's times where you know we know we're doing something bad or not, excuse me not bad or we're doing something that uh let's say weren't wasn't well thought out right because i don't think we intentionally do bad things but like, let's say something wasn't well thought out and you know instead of going back because then on in the null in the name of time, we have to go back and you know undo all those bad habits. We can't really do that in one fell sweep, so we have to go in and we have to like code out of it slowly, right? Yeah, it's not always that's bad habits, good. by the way. Sometimes it's just new syntax that you have to adhere to now, or it's better. Like, you know, like when ES is it ES eight or ES seven, whatever the new uh, syntax JavaScript version that just came out like last year. You know when that got flipped uh, over, yeah. not not ES six, but like uh, the new ES eight, the newer syntax, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah newer the ES stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, you know when that came out, or that is continuously coming out. You know we're trying to utilize <laughs> that as it becomes available to us, right? And so it's not just like bad coding practices that you're trying to code yourself out of. It's just like things that are new in the industry that mm -hmm. um, you want to use that it's better to use, and so. Just, just take the time instead of just saying we're going to refactor the whole application to use this new library, or new, this, this new syntax. Just chunk it out as you go, as you're building features, as yeah. you're re refactoring some code, as you're doing bug fixes. Just you know, say okay, while we're in here, we're just going to code out of it. Like Kibia the other yeah. day had a really good, um, good. Just to give you an example, um, uh, idea about where we should use our render function in our JSX, and we were yeah, talking about yeah. it for a while because we had it at the bottom and everything was up. up I think up it was kind of weird for you. I think it was weird for everybody. Everybody was like, "What?" Yeah, it was very weird. But you know, we talked about it. and It makes sense, right? And so yeah. it's not that we because we just all we're doing is changing the position of where these functions lie within the class. And yeah. instead of going like, "Oh, we like this," okay, now every component has to change, right? We're not doing that. Yeah. As we build features, as we build uh, new pieces of functionality, or 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 fix bugs, you know, while yep. we're in going the code, into that file, we go into the yep. file. We just we make the change, and then we code ourselves out of it. Eventually, it will be the way we want, and it doesn't create yeah. tech debt for us. Yep, and it's, it's attacking that tech debt slowly. You know, just mm -hmm. just kind of like uh, fighting inflation almost, right? Yes, <laughs> like we're just like attacking it slowly. And you know, because it's it's really impractical. You you can't go through the whole code base and change one thing. And and I don't. I actually wouldn't recommend it because uh, you might be introducing uh, more bugs, or you might introduce a bug and don't you can't find it because you don't know what you swapped out and where it is. You know, so yeah, yeah coding your way out is definitely the safer way to do stuff like that. And um, in turn, you'll be actually attacking the tech debt, which you know. It was really hard for us to define also like attacking tech debt is really important because that's to me it was a very it's a defensive move because you're you're preventing um you're preventing uh like something just 
terrible happening in the future, right. you know, or you're saving yourself time in the future, essentially. So, you know, as you're working out these bad habits, you can like attack the, the tech that slowly also, just slowly eliminating it. Um, so we're, so we're on this last topic that I think is a really good one. And, it, and this just sort of kind of came out out of nowhere. And it's um, it's fairly new and we've been trying it. And I think it's really, it's been working really well. And that's just, that's hitting the boards with X's and O's. Yep. And um, this came out from just, you know, if you ever watch a sports team like strategizing against, uh, against an opponent and they're, you know, writing down the X's and O's like in basketball, that's, that's sort of like what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when we're attacking these problems, right? When we have a very complex problem, we just immediately hit the board and just start, you know, start start uh, marking out what we're what we're thinking in our heads and trying to communicate that with the other developers that we're, we're explaining it to. And it's been working out pretty well. It's been working out really well because uh, before that, we would just be sitting at a computers, going back and forth, wasting time, yep. trying to, I guess, put my or put our vision into what we're thinking into the other developer's head, yeah. <laughs> which. Which would be really hard because you gotta think we're doing really complex stuff. Code is really hard, and now we're here trying to articulate what we're trying to do, and we're trying to, I guess, come up with a solution, all like in an imaginary way. So, so what we started doing was we just immediately started hitting the board. We'll say, hey, let's let's go hit the boards right now. Let's you know let's let's kind of work this out. And um, what I've noticed what it does is it kind of it, it brings the team together sometimes because you'll have someone across the room who, you know, who just catches a glimpse of you guys doing something on the board and they'll come over and they might have a couple solutions. So it's been working out pretty well. Actually for this video, we did that and we came up with a lot of great ideas. Yeah, and I'm it, actually looking at the picture right well. now that we took of the whiteboard. You know, ask for whiteboards, by the way, guys, because they're oh, cheap, yeah. they're not yeah. that expensive and then it, it helps out a lot. You know, Kivio was just it talking really about, does. you know, we, you could swarm on, a, <clears throat> on, a, on a, an issue by having a bunch of people at the whiteboard writing their own solutions out, you know. I know yeah. you don't really want to code up there. I, you know, you probably you could write out some code if you wanted to, but at least you could like, you know, go up and write some some conceptual ideas on what you think that should happen yeah. in that code Drop or boxes, in the project. Mm -hmm. Arrows, yep, stickman, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I yeah. would draw the stickman because I suck at drawing. <laughs> but it works. It really does work. I mean, we save more time doing that yeah. than we did before. Especially because you, you know, can trying to hash it out. You could go back later, like a week, and you know nobody erases it from the board, and uh, <laughs> and then you could just either That's see the running bit. <laughs> yeah, because Kivi likes to erase stuff on the board, so we give him a hard time. <laughs> so uh, no, but you could reference that later on, and then like what were we talking about? Like what was that little issue that we were we were talking about? Oh, let me look at the whiteboard. Oh, that's what it was, and then yeah. you could just you know you can get your recollection off that, and so it's it's overall helpful. You know, it gets people together, it gets people more used to like. Um, how other developers on the team, like their thought process on projects. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. the way I'll explain something to you might be different to somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and saving time again. Do. Damn, we keep going back to this thing called time. Seems like <laughs> it's pretty important. <laughs> oh, you know, we didn't talk about scope creep. Oh, that is, oh, that is important. That is so important. Yeah. Yes, so scope creep. Let's touch on that really fast. Mood. Yeah, yeah. That is a huge defensive move. A uh, scope creep, which will be in the fundamentals. Um, I think it could be Eddie, in all I know buckets, you. to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Eddie had actually he had, he had a really good example. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Eddie. Take it away. What's the example? Take, take it away. How, how marketing will come in and just just try to just mess up your time and mess up your your like time, your flow, and your and your Jira sprints. Like, what's up with that? I think that you know, I think anybody who works on an application that that depends on a marketing department to finalize or give the approval for that application knows exactly the headaches that you go into um, when you when you have when you start that discussion. If you don't know, um, marketing generally has a different idea of how to solve a problem than um, software developers to do. I, I, yeah. Software de developers yeah. do. I, I know it's a shocker, but they have different methodologies <laughs> for fixing problems. Um, <laughs> Sometimes those problems don't coincide with what developers want to do, um, yep. and it also uh, the marketing team will they have their you know they're creative people just like we are, and so they have aspirations and dreams, and they have solutions that they have to solve problems for as well. So you know we try to accommodate 
accommodate them as best as we can. But sometimes what happens is we will plan out a project. That project will be close to getting complete and then marketing will just throw a huge monkey wrench into the launch because they're like, well, now we need this huge you know, requirement uh, within your app for us to be able to say, yeah, this is good to go to launch. Uh, and yeah. so now we're scrambling to try to figure out you know, why do we need this? Is it, is, is it necessary? You know, do we have the resources for it? And that's scope creep. And I think that you know, having effective planning and then um, is important because you know, bringing that marketing team into your sprint zeros, into your discovery meetings, when you're defining winning, when you're defining you know, the project scope is important because we know that things are gonna come up and so you just have to, have to um, uh, program against that. But you know, trying to talk about all the marketing requirements beforehand is gonna save you guys time, it's gonna save that scope creep coming up at the end, which it generally does anyway, but you know, not as much. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a defensive, in my opinion, this is a defensive move to say either, hey, you know, we're gonna plan, try to plan for scope creep as best as we can, or um, whether that's adding extra time within the last sprint or two, just to say like, if there's scope creep, then we're gonna allot it into these eight points or whatever. Um, or um, pushing back against that, you know, saying, hey, um, I, I don't believe that this should be MVP. This needs to be like a plus one or a plus two. Uh, and, and then having the, you know, the, not just the clout, but like the, the support from your project manager, from your leadership team to say, hey, we're gonna push this back. So that, that's the defensive side that I'm kind of talking about. Yeah. And I know we're like attacking marketing, but this is go creep from anybody, yeah, right? Yeah, anybody can give it to you. Not letting any anybody come in and, and creep on on that, and you know you're you're being defensive and you're 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 um, protecting your cadence, your time, your you know the, your resources, your developers' sanity. You know, so it's like a it's a defensive move when you yeah. uh, protect against scope creep because that creep can come on strong and ruin things. Oh, anyway, I, I, I'm not going to go back to war stories <laughs> going off because of scope creep, but it's it could get pretty bad, you know. And I think um, uh, there was a really – you said something a couple weeks ago. It's like you were like, I don't want uh, – okay, so so a department was trying to come in and scope creep, right? And you're like, no, no, I'm not going to add it there because it's going to start a bad habit. It's yeah. going to um, – they're going to start expecting it or something like that, something to that effect, right? right? And so you you was putting on a defensive move because you're like, no, if we do it now, they're gonna keep asking. Oh. They have to go through the right process, you know, make it make it a plan, make sure it's in there. They can't just come in and just just put things in all willy nilly because that's gonna start a really bad habit. And they're gonna keep expecting that. Yeah, and that goes back to knowing the playbook, right? So like, if you have a playbook yeah. on on how to handle scope creep, which you should have that section in there, um, that should also be given to the people who you think might scope creep you, saying, hey, this is the process. Yeah. And if you're if you're going to add feature sets after planning, then this is the process that you have to go to go through to be able to to get those features added, you know, and and keep you mentioned like we're, we're we're kind of attacking marketing here and, and we're not doing that deliberately just we hate marketing. We don't. Um, they're, they're just a the, the big time offender. Uh, but you, you, this, this can come from the, the other developers on your team that will say, like, I had this great idea, you know, and it's yeah. not. So scope creep doesn't mean that it's, ne it's necessarily a negative thing. It could be a positive thing, but it's just added right. functionality that you didn't plan for. So yeah. <clears throat> oh hey, just... this new framework came out, um, and it does this. I want to add it in there. Yeah. Like no 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 no. We got to go through the process of adding these feature sets, so they have to also follow that as well. You know, your project manager yeah. might have a dream, and they go, oh, I had a dream last night that I that this <clears throat> big piece of functionality is going to make us. $10 million next year. So we need to add it to MVP. And so, yep. you know, being able to have the, that, you know, ability to push back on that and yep. follow the playbook when it comes to those feature ads is really important. And then that'll help you with time management. Hey, that's, that's our series or that's our video today. Excuse me. Um, we talked about a lot of good stuff, you know, game clock awareness, resources, fundamentals. Next week, we're actually, we're taking a break. Um, we're getting together. We're moving really, really fast. You know, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. And so we want to take a take a week break to sort of recollect our thoughts and see where we want to, uh, I guess, move with this championship series. Um, so right now, you know, our next couple of videos 
are up in the air and we got to really flesh that out. So we're going to be taking a break next week. So you're not going to catch us next week, but we'll be back the following week. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have our first guest coming, I think, the week after that. I think it's the fifth. So we got a lot of exciting stuff coming in. Catch us the week after next. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Better, guys.